Well, are you ready for it? Are you ready for the name change by the snivelling, idiotic, half-witted nincompoops that we have not only done in Wellington, but people who are pushing their own barrow for whatever end they are trying to create? Yes, forget about Air New Zealand. It's going to have a name change, or these idiots would like to see a name change called Air Aotearoa. Wow, wonderful marketing, what a load of crap, a mythical name from somewhere. Air Aotearoa. When Air New Zealand, we have all spent millions, if not billions of dollars over the years promoting Air New Zealand and creating one of the better airlines of the world. Of all the deviations from common sense being committed by this apology for a government and its followers, we've inflicted on ourselves the latest has been the deliberate attempt to denigrate our long-established and certainly our widely respected international brand name. New Zealand by prefixing it with a bloody awful mythical Maori term, Aotearoa, that's not going to help the cause at all. What this demonstrates is that as well as its ignorance of the basic principles of democratic governance is evidenced by its he per per plot, this government is similarly unaware of well-established principles of marketing, It is desecrating our brand name with the addition of a name that might as well be called Abyssinia, for all Aotearoa might mean to our customers in the hundred plus countries of the world who buy the food and beverage exports that for so long have underpinned our New Zealand economy. The latest sorry example of this ignorance, yes, ignorance of this government and the damn awful bloody followers, has been in the news with the visit of our Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nanaya Mahuta. And hasn't it been embarrassing watching her? She's representing us, you and I. And that thing, representing New Zealand, and she's there, being put there by that idiot Prime Minister of ours, and this Nanaya Mahuta was visiting the New Zealand Pavilion at the World Expo in Dubai. It's not just the titling of the entrance, Aotearoa New Zealand, but the deliberate downplaying of the objective and an exercise that cost a reported $63 million of your and my taxpayer money, which in the words of its official website said, now listen to this crap. This is the crap from the Sadurn Maori government. The architectural concept for the pavilion was inspired by Wakatanga receptacles made by Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, to safeguard items of considerable intrinsic value. The beautifully carved containers called Wakahua and Papahau are important cultural symbols for protection and maintenance of our values and practices. They were gifted to the strength in relationships, create new partnerships and maintain traditions and stories from our generation to the next. Have you ever heard so much crap? And that's all it is. It is crap. The pavilion is New Zealand's Waka Tonga, a receptacle for essential aspects of our identity and values. The design used the Waka Tonga as a way of bringing people together and reflects the connecting minds creating the future theme of Expo 2020 Dubai New Zealand gift to the world is our kaitanga'anga, our care for people and place. Well, do you accept that? I certainly don't accept that. This is the biggest load of baloney, the biggest load of crap I have read in a long time. This Maori crowd the ones who 
thinks they know it all, who seem to know absolutely nothing, have set themselves up in this marketplace, this incredible opportunity of really, of really promoting and getting new customers for the products that we produce. I am quite certain that most people couldn't give a stuff who designed the box or who designed a beautiful carved lump of wood to put something in, who could really give a stuff? The people buying our product couldn't give us stuff, but for some reason, the silly little Maori mine down here and silly Adern and her crazy bunch in Wellington think that this is the way to sell things. Well, I've been a, I've been a few years of marketing, and that, that there is just an absolute joke. And when you see that Mahuta, that Nanaia Mahuta, walking and representing New Zealand, well, my blood runs cold. I lose absolute any confidence I had in the years and years and years of experience that built up our export markets to where they are. And then you have this crazy Adun government with this person fronting us called Nanaia Mahuta. Well, all I can say is God help us. The only way that we're going to get out of the financial bind and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren and their children to pay back the huge debt that this communistic Adun government has created and is still creating is through our efforts, our traditional export efforts. And of course, with the crazy bloody greens hanging on the apron strings, with how they have removed all extra exploration for energy, our energy prices are going to go up and up and up. The cost of electric energy is going to go up and up and up. Under the water thing, price of water is going to go up and up and up. And can you imagine, can you imagine if this Adurn bunch of halfwits stay in Wellington, the cost to the rate power and the tax power of having all the names and all the signs in New Zealand changed to Maori? I can see it now. You'd walk into a rather large building and there'd be two stairways. And in Maori, one would say non-European and the other side would say European only. Yes, yes, that's coming. That is coming. And when you look at this Nanaia Mahuta and the people who tend to follow her and support her and these pack of Maori dickheads that make up the Maori caucus, they will be all for that. Yes, they want apartheid and they're certainly going down the track for it with the support of those crazy greens and, yes, this crazy, crazy uh, Jacinda Ardern and her followers and the ones and the people who would vote for her again tomorrow. Scary, scary stuff, I tell you. And the way that this whole COVID-19 thing is now being handled, I tell you what, there's a book out there that absolutely blows this whole stupidity of the COVID-19 approach out of the water. And at the moment, it is on the top of the New York best-selling list for books, a brilliant book. And I'm ordering my copy today from Amazon, and it really blows open the dishonesty, the deceit, and this is the same dishonesty and deceit that Bloomfield and Adurn so easily follow. This Anthony Sauchi, a dreadful, dreadful, horrible, horrible little man. And read this book, and you, you will realise with him along with Bill Gates and others of that same milk 
how they've been pulling your leg, how they've been actually softening you up for things that you didn't even know you were being softened up for. And this this thing down in Wellington, I think her name is Jacinda Ardern, she is a great believer in following and following the instructions, yes, the instructions of people like Anthony Falsi and to hell, and to hell with the proper outcome for you, for I, and for New Zealand. And just watching what has happened at the World Expo and the way that our image has been changed, or they're trying to change this image to something that it's not, is really, really frightening. In fact, I'm not only frightened, I'm completely pissed off with this lot. Completely pissed off, right up to my back teeth, with this disgusting, this disgusting government. It's not even an apology for a governmental administration. It's an apology for load of nonsense, nonsense and more nonsense and deception.